welcome to another VRTK tutorial video. In this video we're going to show how we can set up the pseudo body so when we're walking around our scene it will automatically stop us from going through any geometry. It will also handle us walking up and down ramps and then being able to fall off a ramp allowing us to walk up and down stairs using physics and even prevent us from pushing our head into any scene geometry. Please consider becoming a VRTK patron. There are plenty of membership levels to sign up at and it really helps to fund these videos. So we're back in the scene where we set up our axis move and the vignette comfort tunneling. And what we're going to do now is look at what the pseudo body can offer us. By default, it will enable us to determine when collisions occur within the scene. And we're going to look at three different uses of the pseudo body in this tutorial video. So to start with, let's go and get the pseudo body package into our project. And we do that as always by going to window, then to Tilia, then to the package importer. And then we look down here, we find the pseudo body and we can click add to add that to our project. And when that's added to our project, we can close down our package importer window. And now all we need to do is add a pseudo body into our scene. So we do that again by right clicking on our hierarchy, going down to Tilia, then to prefabs, then to trackers, and then we just select trackers pseudo body. And the pseudo body is added to our scene. I'm just going to move that down to the bottom so we can see it easier. And then if we look at our pseudo body facade, we've got a couple of things that we need to set up on our tracking settings. We've got the source and the offset. The source is the thing we want our pseudo body to actually follow around the scene. And what we want it to follow around is our headset. So what we're going to do is go to our tracked alias and then in aliases and grab the headset alias, drag and drop that into source. And then the offset is whatever we're offsetting our headset position to. We know our play area is the center of where we're standing in our scene, but we can walk away from that in VR and therefore our play area gets offset from our headset. So what we're going to do is set our offset here to our play area alias. And we will come back and look at some of the other settings in a moment. We can change things like the character radius and the source thickness, but we'll leave all those as they are for now. If we just investigate what's going on inside the pseudo body, we can see it's got a character controller, which is just using a standard Unity character controller. And we can adjust these settings to suit if we need. And then we've also got the collidable volume, which is a rigid body. And inside the rigid body, there is a capsule collider. But we don't need to change any of these things, so we can just collapse that up. And what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to run the scene and show you what the default setup of the pseudo body looks like. And to do that, I'm just going to grab, drag and drop the game tag into its own window over here. So we can see our scene and the game at the same time. So let's just play the scene and see this working now. So now we're in the scene, we can see as I move around, we can see that character controller down in our scene view here. That's the character controller that we're moving around. And if I was to actually walk a wall, what we can see is I continue to walk through the wall, but the character controller has actually stopped at this wall. So that's allowed us to diverge from where we should be in the game world to where we are in the real world. And that may be something you want to do, where you can diverge in the real world, but remain in that position in the game world and then handle that in some way. That usually isn't the default case of what people want, but the default setup of the pseudo body, that's what it does. So let's jump back into the edit mode and we'll update this now. So as I said, what happened there was when we walked through the wall, our character controller stopped at the wall as it should, but we were able to continue to walk through the wall. So what we want to do is prevent that from occurring. Now the reason we can continue to walk through the wall is because we're using our axis move, which is updating our play area position. And when we update the play area position, that keeps moving, but the pseudo body doesn't know how to actually resolve that collision and bring it back. So what we need to do is tell our pseudo body facade about the axis move and to say, when this moves, make sure you update your collisions. So we can do that by using this external position mutators. We're going to add another empty element here. Then all we need to do is get our axis move game object that we were using to do our left and right forward and backwards sliding on which is this one here, because this is the one that was moving us forward, backwards, left and right. And this was the one that was just doing rotation. So we don't need to worry about rotation. But this first one, we're just going to grab, drag and drop that into this external position mutator. And that means now anytime the axis move mutates the position of our play area, the pseudo body will listen to that and say, if you have caused a divergence between the real player and our character controller, we'll move them back and prevent that from walking through the geometry. So let's run the scene again and we can see that working. So again, now we can see our character controller down there. And if I was to walk up to the wall now, as we hit the wall, we no longer go through the wall. And you can see in our game view on the right, we can't actually pass through that wall. We're just stuck on that wall. And if we walk around the wall, we can walk through. And now we can walk up the ramp as well, because that pseudo body is controlling that ability to walk up and down the ramp. And then if we were to walk off the end of the ramp, the gravity will put us down and we'll fall as we expect. 
Now, the other thing that we can do in this scenario is because we are using the axis move to move our person around, if I was to walk next to this wall here, what I could do now is I can physically put my head into the wall and we can see I'm actually looking through the wall. If I start moving, it will resolve that collision and it will put us outside of the wall again. But you may also want it not to allow you to actually put your head into the wall in the first place. So we can do that as well in a number of ways. Let's just stop this and go back into edit mode. We've already covered a way of doing this in the past by fading the user's headset and then teleporting them back to a safe location. Or what we can do as well is simply just prevent the pseudo body from allowing us to enter any geometry. And there's a simple tick box to allow us to do that, prevent enter geometry. And we can just tick that and that's all we need to do. The final thing that we might want to do as well is make sure that our track alias is always being updated whenever our pseudo body does something. So we can do that quite easily by looking inside the pseudo body and then looking inside internal. We can see down here we've got a moment processor and what that's doing is making sure the pseudo body's process is run every frame in a fixed update. Now if we look at the track alias and go into the internal on there, that's also got a moment processor but that's only working in the pre-render moment. So we also want to run this in the fixed update as well to make sure it's always in line with physics. So we can do that quite easily by just going down to our internal moment processor on our pseudo body, adding in another element here, and then grabbing our track alias, dragging and dropping that into here. And what this will do is it will run the pseudo body moments every fixed update, and then any moment that needs to run within the track alias will also get run within that fixed update as well. So all that's left to do now is jump into the scene and we can see this working. We can see now if I walk into a wall, I still can't walk through the wall. And if I walk over to this large wall here and get right next to the wall. Now if I try and put my head into the wall, what it actually does is pushes the wall away from us. So we can't actually put our head into the wall anymore at all. And if I do it on the corner of the wall, you can see that better there pushing us away on that corner. And there we go, we've set up the pseudo body now to handle any collisions with our game geometry for us to prevent us from being able to walk into it. I hope you found this video useful. If you have, please consider subscribing to the YouTube channel, leave any likes, dislikes, comments down below, and please consider becoming a VRTK patron as that really helps fund these videos. Thanks for watching and bye for now.